Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is the Flatless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel, and today... Today, maybe we find out what really happened. But first, let's question Professor Means and see if the ends truly justify the means. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Well, the defendant came to me with what she said it was very important, and by necessity, the secret. She asked me to pre record my speech and come to the audio room during the mock trial. Jennifer confessed to the murder and asked that I get her declared innocent in court. She also said that I had become an accomplice after losing my alibi due to the pre recording. But when I said that I would protect Jennifer, I meant it because it's the uh, humane thing to do. Uh-huh, you're full of garbage. Oh my, so you seen the Finney uh, threatened you? Yeah, that little girl threatens you. This has to be a lie. I mean, everything about it lines up too perfectly to be true. And I'm not saying that females can't be dangerous. I'm just saying it's Juniper. She, she's not dangerous. She's not. No, well, this is my most consequential of occasions. Let me be completely frank with you. Juniper has truly taken to heart my teaching that states that the ends justifies the means. I don't believe you. When she asked me to defend her, she said that I also, also must prove her two friends innocent. Her two friends? Witnesses? Correct. You, Akon, and Robin Newman. I was to ensure that all three walked free. All three would achieve the dream. That was the result that Juniper was seeking. And she was even willing to threaten me, her own professor, to that end. I can't believe it, this Kellywag. Huh. You no doubt had high praise for her ruthless tactics. Oh yes, well that is why I vowed to vigorously defend her despite her threatening me. Well, there was a time when lawyers really sought the truth that they wished for victory in the court. But you know, alas, the dark days of the law are here and those days before were over. But now in the defense of justice, ordering all that is good, the end must justify the means. I am so sick of hearing that phrase. Although it truly agrees to be so, I must tell you this. Forsake the truth of its victory that you seek. Steal yourself for this new courtroom reality. That does it. He's gonna regret dragging those dismal depressing ideas in here. Since he's already surrendered to the dark age of the law, it's up to me to fight it. Hmm, why so silent, Sextonel? Is something the matter? This, this, this is a court of law. It's no place for long-winded talks about idealistic principles. Well, that's why I'm going to let the evidence do the talking. Uh, let's not get carried away now, Miss Sykes. It will not do you to have you attempting to discredit my doctrine. Do not force me to rectify the situation. No, go ahead and rectify it. Only if I lose and you win, that is. The gauntlet has been thrown. Cross-examination. Professor Reed's testimony. The defendant came to me with what she said was very important and by necessity secret. I doubt our client would have come to you with something like that. Oh, you have a point there. If only Professor Gordon had been alive, I suspect Juniper would have gone to her instead. So, our client came to talk to you after Professor Court was dead? Uh, let's go through this step by step, shall we? You see, uh, first, uh, Juniper came to me that day. And you know, she asked me to pre record my speech and come to the audio room during the mock trial. 
Are you saying, suggesting, it was a client who told you to fake an alibi? You know what? I know this is totally off topic. I'm sorry, I just noticed this. Her glove has the widget symbol. I don't know why I never so, never noticed that before, but I just thought it was cool. Anyway, right. You have every reason to be surprised. I too was shocked when I saw that widget symbol on a glove too. I mean, uh, what she told me that? Stop distracting me. I see what you're doing. Simply put, Juniper has a secret that she wished to protect that badly. Is he kidding me? That lie could have been further from the truth. The problem is, how am I going to expose it? Oh, it was an earnest request from an outstanding student. How could I possibly have refused? It was an offer you couldn't refuse. Juniper confessed to the murder. Asked that I get her declared innocent in court. Hold it! Did you consider that a threat? Mm, yes, but it's not you to whom she has passed her domains on to. Miss Sykes, you must realize that you, too, are being used by Juniper. What? Your Honor, I ask that you, too, do not let her feign weakness and innocence fool you. Juniper Woods is quite clever and extremely tough. Not at all like what Flutter's bird said earlier. She is devious, I tell you, devious. And perhaps most important of all, she is a fervent follower of my teachings. I don't, gotcha. I don't know if that's true. Your Honor, the witness's testimony is nothing but an attack on a client's character. Yeah, we will. Uh, objection sustained. Uh, so be it. Well, nevertheless, the fact that she threatened me is immutable. She also said that I had become an accomplice after losing my alibi due to the pre recording. Hold it! How could you overlook such a threat? As a teacher, it's your duty to discipline the students. Oh, yes. Well, perhaps I do have some serious reflection to do on this matter. I suppose it was just wishful thinking on my part. Now I want to believe that. Judith Mahannon actually committed murder and that she had a man to threaten me. Oh, uh, really? Uh, please do explain. Long had I waited for a student who would embody my teachings. Did this witness realize what he's saying? Well, surely you must see the true meaning of my words. I am merely saying true to what I teach. My methods are but a reflection of the times. Oh, wow. This way of thinking has really worked. I haven't heard any inconsistencies yet. I wouldn't be so sure. Really? The more he tries to avoid logical inconsistencies in his testimony, the more likely we'll see inconsistencies between his actions and his words. What is the dark age in which we live? And there is much I would like to say on the matter. But when I said that I would protect Juniper, well, I meant it, because it's the humane thing to do. Hold it! You were trying to protect our client? Yeah, right. Just say anything to put the team on Juni. Oh, what a frightful look. I would ask that you uh, not glare at me so. I have nothing but admiration for how Juniper was willing to go as far as to threaten me. Well, that is why I am protecting her by any means possible. She has been a model student. Liar. You're trying to put the blame on her. How am I going to show that what he's saying isn't what he's really thinking? Well, you cannot possibly overturn my claims. So is it about time that you made it to feet? Well, after all, if my unassailable logic is not truth, then what is? Uh, how about the... Yeah? If he thinks I'm going to give in to his pick lies, he's got another thing coming. I'm going to find a hole in his story if it's the last thing that I do. Even though he's rotten to the core, he's a total bow. I mean, that, that all made perfect sense. Yeah, but you can't believe a word that he says. He's making this up as he goes along. Let's trip up his own words yet. Time to see how consistently the professor's testimony matches up with his actual actions.
The Venom game. Okay, I don't need to say this. We've already said this. So where is the inconsistency? The defense came to me what you said. Okay, there's nothing here. She asked me to pre-record my speech. But we don't have any evidence that would confirm this. Because the only evidence we have is there's a pre-record speech. Juniper confessed the murder as I declare innocent court. There's no substantial information here. She also said I might become an accomplice and lose my alibi. Again, there's no substantial information here. This is all just story beats. But when I suspect I would protect Juniper, I mean it because it's the main thing to do. Again, I don't see any consistencies there either. Ah, sword emblem. That's about O'Connor. Mock script. Um, I don't see anything here. The all autopsy report. Can't play this, unfortunately. Photo. It's found backstage. Over the banner. Print fragments. Photos. I mean, the problem is we don't have the rest of this. I need something that ties means to the case. That's about court, not him. There's nothing here about him either. Identifies the fake. Professor Means used Hugh to pass it on to the police. And that's the fake, right? Yeah, that's a fake. This is the only piece of evidence that seems to tie means to the case. Okay, record. Confess to the murder. Accomplice. I would protect Juniper because it's the main thing to do. Yet, she... He... Gave a fake recording to Hugh to pass it on to the police. If he wanted to protect her, why would he do that? Objection. All right. Okay. Up to, a, uh, up to a good start so far, even though that took way too long to figure out. But, you know, that's fine. It's fine. I just had to shift through the evidence. It's been a couple days. So let me get this straight. You were trying to help Miss Woods. Ha. Huh. That's nothing more than a bald-faced lie. No offense, Your Honor. Got Widget. Widget's angry. Uh, such the information of my character in your hair follicles, your honor. It's an outrage. Hmm. The sex will clarify your statement. I'll leave my hair follicles out of this time. <laughs> yes, of course, your honor. But you have a wonderful beard, though. It makes up for it. Anyway, now please take a look at this. The witness gave this tape to Mr. O'Connor. Then he slightly whispered, take this to the police and tell them you found it. Oh, there's no whispering slightly or otherwise about. You know, I simply did that out of a uh, kindness. Objection. The tape card contained our client's voice. In short, it's incredible damaging evidence. Why would it even exist if the witness wasn't trying to pin the murder on a client? Uh, the dots. They say the word of hell is paid with good intentions, but not yours. You never had good intentions. Only lies to protect yourself with while blaming another. You, Professor, are the embodiment of the dark age of the law. Nicely said, Athena. She's all fired up. Now. Why, you little... Ooh, he is mad. You dare call my teachings and methods lies? Whoa! Ooh. 
<laughs> what the heck is this? The Leavis Legal Academy is a proud institution. It is the most powerful in the world. You'll never forget what true education lawyer means once I'm through with you. Huh? Um, Professor Meads, uh, what's with your hair? Quiet! No talking to Glass! Just threw her chalk at me. Ow! Okay, this guy changed rapidly. I see news up here, everyone. Home room is the issue. We will begin with the wild cup. Theta Sykes! Huh? Uh, 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 yeah? Pull of justice! I'm fine. Or, I mean, I'm here. Food! The Bible response is here! Without any extraneous information! Ouch! I mean, here! Stop throwing stuff at me! Next, your honor! Uh, here! C class, let's pop away the answer! Simon Black Creel! Hmm. Uh... I said, Simon Black Creel! You or not? Don't make me get out of the stick, young man! Uh, I don't got time for this. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> well then, I'll just mark your Now, get out of my class, it's easy! Get out. Very well, if that is your wish. Who am I defy, my homeroom teacher? Oh, is that such a good idea? Prosecutor Blackwell is free of his shackles. Ha <laughs> ha it just so happens I was a member of my high school's disciplinary committee. But is that really so shocking? <laughs> ah, constabulary lapdog, the teacher's pet. What a malleable mutt you are, Fulbright. Well, it's very good, Bobby. You just earned a gold star and a promotion to the head disciplinary. Ah! Class, now is this. Ark, why do I have the sudden urge to go to the nurse's office with a stomach ache? Main point, Juniper is a killer, I am innocent. <laughs> Pay attention, I am not the killer, Juniper is. Well, this is Leo and he exists, you get me to be listening. Objection. But Professor, you created the funny tape to pin the blame on Juniper. Plus, you were the only one who could have moved the body to the mock trial. Please note, I was not at school. Lena, you disappoint me, Sue. I think you were labeled me a murder. That's three to marriage to you. Bad did you? The murder occurred on the 23rd between 6 and 8 p.m. But I was already home by the 10. So how could I have been involved in your crime? Professor Means, can you really prove that you had already got the home by that time? <laughs> can you put that in a slot school? Uh, no. No, I can't. <laughs> so, you admitted. Well, you just earned the extra credit for your honesty. You still got those three demerits. Eh. <laughs> but you have also earned yourself a laboratory clean news until you graduate. Ew! I do enough for that at the office. Ooh! No way, man! I totally object! Robin? I can't believe I fell for the press of silver tongue nice. Where are you? How dare you talk about your teacher like that? I'm not listening to any more, man! No way, no how! Now, I have a confession to make. You know those two statues that were on stage? I didn't make them all by myself! The statue's on stage. Do I want to know where this is headed. I was able to finish one of them, but the last bell ring before I had time for the other one. So like, I asked Professor Means to make it for me. In other words, the professor was there on the stage after the last bell. Like, totally right? And would have been way past 7 p.m. before he could have finished. Uh, Professor Means was uh, still at school. This is well, it's incredibly important tes uh, testimony. <clears throat> I 
The professor told me that I'll take care of it. No, I'm sorry. The professor told me, we will take care of it. I thought my parents would let me be an artiste if I said I made both statues myself. Ah, I'm so, so sorry, but I told you the truth. Robin. Quick, somebody get the truth without doing without my sight. Simon, you ain't hard to among the delinquents. Do something. <laughs> oh, the bird is never gonna get old. And uh, who's the child of this class been around here? Hmm, not interested. But if you want a class in swordsmanship, well then I'm your man. Of course, only real blades will do. This was a school. The limits will be confiscated. Dare! Dare nurse! Why is gold nurse? We need one! And what seems, six to know, six to showdown, professor. In which case, you would do well to draw your staff quick as lightning. Very well. Then I will just have to put my hands in my seal. The real last begins, take a beard. Ready to be suit. Old school style. Uh, what is it? Oh, never mind. You don't test me, please. I really should be used to this by now, but... Uh... Why do I get all the weird ones? Junior Physical, I am innocent. Professor means work of art. Now be a teach. Robin to go over half a day to complete one stitch. I, however, finished most of the other satchels between 7 and 8.30 p.m. The fed at Juniper saw the two satchels with no eyes at 8.30 p.m. Complete the satchels so quickly meant I could not leave the stage for a single second. How could I possibly have the time to go to the yard room and commit a murder? Hmm, you will see the defendant saw the finished statues. Precisely. She says we see the statues yesterday. Her defense team was there and heard her say so too. I'll try to deny it now. That evening, I went back to my dressing room to get something I'd forgotten there. It was well after the last bell rang. I'd say, maybe around 8.30. That's when I noticed that both stage statues were finished. They were quite large, and they were each covered with white sheep, but I could tell. Oh, right. The professor was there when that matter came up. Before I address the professor's charges, I have a question for Robin. How hard would it be to complete a statue like that in one and a half hours? Well, it would probably take me at least uh, twice as long. So, personally... I think it would be incredibly difficult to finish it in that short a time. Gah, that didn't exactly help my case. But he won't get off that easy. He's about to stumble over his own slippery means. Well, actually it does help because it shows that he didn't complete the statue. Ah, uh, it was covered up, wasn't it? Professor means work of art. When you have a teach, probably took over half a day to complete one stage. Miss Newman took over half a day. Can you please be a little more precise than that? <laughs> what a wonderful quiz. She's having a quite tough time, you see. Huskers Gavin's actually alone took it from the morning hours into the evening. Hmm, well, it is a rather large stage we have to rule. Don't be silly. Really, it's the difference between the city and the teacher. I, however, finished most of the other statues between 7 and 8.30 p.m. Most of the other statue? What exactly does that mean? Robin created a basic outline of Mr. Wright's stage for the last middle ring. I, in turn, completed the rest of it. <laughs> I see. In academics as well as art, learning the basics is incredibly important. In short, you skipped the most important part of statue making, didn't you? Why, you went to let out! There's a practical activation built upon the basics that takes so much time. For instance, I myself mastered the basics a long, long time ago. Hmm. Unlike Miss Fancy Pants here, who lacks all loyalty fundamentals. Oh, quiet you. Now, do you understand? I did not leave that stage until I was dead. Will Miss Sykes accept the witness's claim? I don't like Buster. 
No, no, I don't. I know there's more to this, and I won't stop until the truth comes out. The more you struggle, the more you sink. Like so much little quicksand, so to speak. Well, I use the words ultimate technique to complete the statue by 8.30 p.m. The defendant Juniper, she saw the two statues with her own eyes at 8.30 p.m. Or maybe our client only thought she saw the statues. Silence. A pity for you, but we have already confirmed it with the accused. She is on record as having seen both statues. Yeah, that's true. Just thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> I have the ultimate in courtroom techniques. It's absolutely irritating. It will bury you. So be a finally rest in place, along with all those believed in you. Tisk, is there no way to get to this guy? You better be a Tej. Be very close to Tej. Clean his statue so quickly, man. I could not leave the stage for a single second. Why are you in such a hurry? In the legal world, your body is cap. The early bird gets the worm. Well, that's why I get to be in at 9 p.m. each and every night. And that's why I was working so fast I could. I don't want to miss my bedtime. Gah. Well, you really can see that I never left the stage? A little twerk. Well, Miss Sykes, you accept the uh, witness's claim? Uh, this again? No, no, I don't. I know there's more to this. I'm gonna stop until the truth comes out. I'll be careful, Athena. We don't have anything. It's probably best to just grin and bear for you now until you find something to nail with. But, but, I... Uh... What well, is this nonsense? I'm quite busy today. As I wasn't dying of the crime. How could I possibly have had time to go to the orange room and commit the murder? Yeah, but you could have taken a short break or something. Bastards! I didn't even have 10 minutes to spare. Now you're fired for a visit to the laboratory. Well, let me ask you, Your Honor. You find anything wrong with my claim? Hmm. So far, it appears that your statue making was quite a difficult chore. And I see nothing that could overturn your claim that you never left the stage. Gah. But the atom is only a few steps away. What's the plan? All I can think of is pressing him like crazy. That's all I can think of too. Well, we'll just have to figure out the whole exploit. What about those two things that I... I, uh, pressed them on. There was like one here. This doesn't line up. Because we have previous evidence. We have pictures of what the stage looks like. The last of the two of Miriam's photos, they show students setting up the stages backed up on the night of the murder. Oh, Professor Means is there. Ah, it does line up. He is there. Plus, this was at like 6.01 and 6.03. And that one, it. That one, it work. Can you stop tapping, please? I'm thinking. Complaining to say to you so quickly, man, I could not leave the stage for a single second. It's definitely on the stage. So I'm booking on stage, Professor Court having made it into a completely different looking statue the day before the mock trial. What was the other one? 
Is it here? In the second point? Uh, now I'm Light Buster. Let's see this one. You know, I don't think I pressed the other one. Yeah, I did press this one. Sorry, I don't understand. Like, it just got taken into this little hole here. And it says to accept. I mean, that doesn't seem to change anything. Oh! oh okay, maybe that did change something. I did everything, but it's like I can't prove anything. Tisk, I guess I. I could see. Hmm? I could hear you. You, uh, see loud this time? Ugh. I could see that Professor Means never left the stage. <laughs> Well, that's right. But what took you so long? I was here to save the entire team. Could possibly commit that crime. I'm not going to give up here. I'm afraid I had to say with the witness mistakes. Unless you have any further objections, I had to put this issue to rest. Objection! I guess she does have further objections. Not yet. The defense still has an objection. Athena, you thought of something? Well, as I said, not yet. Oh, so it's time for legal smoke and mirrors? Not yet, Athena. It's not time, it's time to quit. It's at times like this when it seems like there's no way out that you have to... Yeah. I have to turn the case upside down. Ooh. Instead of focusing on whether Professor Means could have gone to the art room, I should focus on how he could commit murder without going there. Interesting. Seems a young lady has a real bona fide idea. But I'll use any means necessary. Give me gas and stones. But sure, I'll distract him. Arg! Who brought the bird to school? <laughs> Sykes to know. If I hear one word of a usual chipper chamber, I shall have your head. The murder occurred in the art room, yet the witness was on stage. How do you propose to fill the vast gap between these two key facts? If I accept the premise that the professor was on the stage the entire time, the only other answer is that we got something else wrong. Wait, that's it. Every last one of us made a huge mistake. We were totally wrong about the... Could be the murder weapon. It could actually be a bow and arrow. Like, it could have really been a bow and arrow instead of the all. Because you could kill someone from that distance. And it's a tough shot, but you could. But I think it's more likely we're wrong about the crime scene. If Professor Means was on the stage the entire time, then he must be the killer. Ridiculous! Fans become totally incoherent! No, it's just the murder wasn't committed where we thought it was. Ah, continue, Sykes to know. Okay, the murder was actually committed here. Oh my god. Um. Well, was it the art room? When I have in this stage, there was already people there. Could I have been in the waiting room? I don't I don't know. Like I honestly don't know. This this is this is stopping me. I mean lecture hall is on the same floor as the art room. So I'm leaning towards the lecture hall. The murder was committed here. 
Can you explain how I got there and how I moved the body? Of course, but we'll all have to think this over together. Hmm, no, that task is for you and you alone, as is his penalty. Ark! So, so the location we're looking for didn't require the professor or the body to move. Hmm, but is there really such a place? The stage? The greatest of this case has been how the body was moved from the art room. But if the murder occurred on the stage, that means the body was never moved at all. Really? The murder occurred in the art room. Silly girl! The body was found and wasn't a drop of blood on the stage floor. Surely there would have been some blood if that's where the murder was committed. There wasn't any blood on the stage, really. But there was something on stage at the time of the murder that's not bloodstained. Uh, one of the flags or something? Trace amount of blood. The banner. It's true. There were no bloodstains on the stage floor. But there was something on the stage that did have a bloodstain. And that would be this. This gold banner. No blood would have gotten on the floor if this were under the victim when she was killed. Oh my, that's quite a compelling theory. Silence. Eek! What is it now? My theory makes perfect sense. That was a pathetic attempt. You must put every inch of your body into your attacks. The autopsy states the cause of death was loss of blood. Yet only a trace amount was found upon that banner. Where did the rest go? Blood getting on went there when the body was moved by wire makes more sense than not. <laughs> Very good, Simon. Tell me, what is your four stories for higher education? Well, I'll write you the ultimate recommendation letters. Yeah, I'll be guaranteed to get in. Objection. Actually, the defense is going to explain that as well. You do? If there was only a trace amount of blood on the school banner, then there must have been something else that could have used to suck up the blood. All I had to do is figure out what. This is what sucked up most of the victim's blood. Is it the other banner? Because it got incinerated? Take that! Why, it looks like there's some other piece of fabric on top of the school banner. It's the cleanest banner that had been specifically made for the school concept. Since it's on top of the skull banner, the blood would have hit it first. It could have been easily absorbed most of the blood like a dishcloth. And only a small amount would have soaked through to the skull banner below. So, it makes little sense for the skull banner to have only a little blood on it. So the uh, banner absorbed the blood like a dishcloth. Well, yes, I guess I would explain it. The Gavinius banner was like a dishcloth? Surely it was at least towel quality. Simone! Don't just stay in there and do something! Silence! Sights to know. You are learning to wield a blade quite well. But how will you respond when it comes slashing at you like this? The remnant of a large blood stain was detected in the art room. But why would there be blood there if the murder occurred on the stage, as you claim? Objection! The blood stain in the art room was faked. How? I'll tell you how. All that was needed was something that could transfer the blood upstairs. And that something was... A piece of evidence we just finished discussing. The killer used this to bring the victim's body of blood up to the art room. Ah, uh, the... The thing is, it's so low as present more garbage to this could. It's only garbage because someone tried to destroy it by tossing it in the incinerator. That someone was most likely the killer seeking to get rid of the crucial evidence. The killer used the wire to bring the blood soaked governor's banner to the art room. Then, the blood was wiped onto the floor to complete the ruse. It makes perfect sense.
Order, order, order. It's quite a development. I think the body was never actually moved. How was it right there? The body must have been moved. I was explaining the loud crash you heard in the mock trial. What was it caused by the body crashing in the statues? Well, then what was it? Ugh, I hadn't thought of that. If that loud crash wasn't the body hitting the statues, then what was it indeed? The gnat in the skull banner shows that something was carried along the wire in it. So if that's true, I know what I have to find out. Something that was in the art room before the murder and then on the stage after. The statue? The object that was set down the wire to crash into the statues was... The other statue? Yeah? Take that. Arr, the statue! Yes, I believe it was the statue that put the other two, not Professor Court's body. The unique statue that sees you on the right, that's the pure white Lady Justice from earlier. Professor Court accidentally broke it while she was polishing it the day before the mock trial. But she used her own art unique artistic sense and technique to repair it, as you see here. Nobody would have guessed that was originally Lady Justice. Silence. Hmm, perhaps you were onto something. But why? Pray tell, would anyone move that scrap heap relic in such a tedious manner? Excellent question, Simon. You know, keep them coming. You know why? But the fact that you won't acknowledge it shows how twisted you are. Lady Justice was moved to the mock trial. During that time, Professor Meets was fabricating an alibi with his pre-recorded speech. If we consider the facts, then Lady Justice was moved in order to... Uh, interrupt the mock trial? Professor Means is trying to interrupt the mock trial. That must be the answer. Hmm, well then let me ask you this. Why would the professor want to interrupt the mock trial? I object, Your Honor. I object to how you always ask people questions like that. <laughs> you should try to think for yourself once in a while. <laughs> oh, I just had a thought. It was a penalty for a certain smart alecky defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was that was that was worth it. That was worth it. Ugh, oh, the issue here is the moon and the Lady Justice statue. I need to focus on that. Lady Justice was moon during the mock trial. During that time, Professor Means was fabricating ally with his pre-recorded speech. If we consider the facts, the Lady Justice was moon in order to hide the body. Professor Means was trying to hide the body. That's the only explanation. Really? But by moving Lady Justice, he actually led you straight to it. But there's always two sides to a story, and the truth is not always what it seems. Well, Miss Sykes, as much at least is true. You deserve yourself a penalty. Jeez, oh, I'm horrible at this right now. Eek! Uh, think a thing to think. Yeah, yeah, okay, there's only one other response. Point is to the body. Professor Means is a pre-recorded speech to make an alibi during the mock trial. He wanted to make it look like he couldn't possibly have moved the body. Women Lady Justice was his way of pointing us to the body and submitting his alibi. Gar! Well, let's go ahead and pursue his argument. A while there, I thought you weren't taking the trial seriously. Well done. Sorry about that. I got a little caught up. You should never underestimate me, Athena Sex. Press me is always means what he says, and it says what he means by all means. Fine then. Say it already. I'm waiting. The murder occurred the night before, but the body wasn't found until the late next day. Tell the students past stage that they met in the lecture hall for the mock trial. The body would absolutely be found. So answer me this. Why didn't anyone see the body that entire time? That can be explained by, uh, uh um... Ah! If the victim was murdered on the stage and left there, well, then the body would inevitably be, have been discovered. And of course, there was no way to hide a body upon that stage. It's not good, Athena. A claim is close to being beaten to a pulp. 
I know, but we've come so far. Yeah, consider yourself stupid. Couldn't have possibly killed anyone. Who's that? Kill is none other than Jennifer Woods. Always has been and always will be. Alright, just, just wait a minute. Poor Jennifer. She must seriously forget having asked you to defend her. Uh, and Anne insults the injury and nearly had you convicted of a murder. Surely you haven't forgotten that little fiasco. Ark! Athena Sykes attorney badge is just for show. <laughs> wow, roasted. Not only did you fail to defend your client, you also raised false charges against the free. You have no right to call yourself a lawyer. Come on, Athena, don't buckle. Ah! We just had a breakdown, but it wasn't the accused, it was us. Well, this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends the same way as a mock trial. Would you not lose everything you worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure it doesn't happen then, won't I? Come on, Athena, you can do this. Oh, this is creepy. Did we just enter Silent Hill? Don't tell me I failed once again. Failed to save someone yet dear to me. I've worked so hard to become a lawyer. And even studied psychology. Has it all been for naught? Am I just doomed? We live that all over again? What is... What the heck was that? That was a little child with blood on her. Uh, Athena, what's wrong? Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Relax. Athena, breathe. It's not work. Everything going dark. After all I've done, this is how it ends. Forgive me, Junie. I could have protected like I said I would. What the heck kind of trauma happened in her past? Roman! You leave Athena alone, man! She's the one who saved me! It was because of Athena that I could stop hiding and start living my life as a girl again. And she saved the friendship between Q, Juniper, and I. I think you're an awesome lawyer, Athena. You're like one of the best. Oh, but I raised false charges against you. And that's not all. I do some seriously unforgivable things. This kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy 4. When you go to the end. And all your friends show up. And give you energy to keep fighting to defeat the final boss. <laughs> that's what's going on here. Heh. <laughs> what's the big deal? False charges are nothing to be scared of. And I'm not even mad at you. I really should really be thanking you. Use legitimate means. To expose my wrongdoings, give me a chance to examine what's important. But uh, what does it matter if I can't say Juniper? I mean, the whole reason I've come so far is... It's not over yet, Dina. Even now, at this very moment, I still believe in you. Junie. I know you better than most people, Athena. And I know you never surrendered to the dark age of the law like the professor did. Thank you, Junie. But I feel like I can barely breathe. I don't know what to do. Silence. Stop, you're bleeding this instant. You look like an utter fool. Pasket of Black Quill? There is one who awaits you, is there not? And that is the reason you have studied so very hard. Are you prepared to give up on all you have worked for thus far? It would not do to have you disappoint you know who. I, I. 
Blackwell is actually helping her. <laughs> You're wasting your time. You have nothing on me. No evidence or anything else to establish my guilt. You are helpless before the mighty of warriors who win the ends just by the means. Objection! Don't worry, Athena. You're doing fine. The truth will always win against people like him. But, but, Apollo, what am I supposed to do now? Listen, all you have to do is take a deep breath and look back over the entire case. If there's truth to be found, and there always is, be sure to find it. Now, let me see you smile. Remember what Mr. Wright said? The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Uh. This part's cool. I like this. We can really see her growing into her own. The worst of times are when I need my biggest smile. Athena Sykes is psyched and ready to rock. Prepare for your utter defeat. Okay, I hate to do this. Because I have a feeling we're winding down to the end of this case. But I'm going to have to stop here because unfortunately I had to start recording late tonight. And it's 11 p.m. I still have to render this video and I got to upload it and I had to be work in about six and a half hours. So unfortunately, you know, hey, I do have a real life job that I got to do. So it's it means I can't continue on. I would like to go until the end of this case. Even if it takes like an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes or even two hours. Uh, I could always go back and just cut it. But because I don't have time to do that, I'm going to have to stop here. So, on our next episode of Ace Attorney Dual Destiny, almost guaranteed we're finishing this case, right? Like, I really believe we're really, really close. But even if we're really, really close, the, the, the epilogue usually takes about 10 minutes. And there's no way we're 10 minutes away from finishing this case, right? So, at the very least, it should be about a 30-minute video. Uh, Yeah, um... I'm mean, again sorry we had to stop the case early, but yeah, I need to today. Uh, I'm much love to you all, my friends. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.